times that I'm uh, so grateful to be a pastor of a church where so many people trust God with their finances and give generously. I mean, we have a beautiful facility. We have a great staff. Uh, we, we do a lot uh, in the community, and it's only because of your generosity. Uh, some pastors do not assume their people will give generously. A man had a severe heart attack and was recuperating in the hospital when his family learned he had just become heir to a million dollars. And they were worried that uh, about it, it, it being a shock to him, so they asked their pastor to, to tell him. And he did it this way. He said, what would you do if you inherited a million dollars? And the man said, well, I'd give half of it to the church. And the pastor had a heart attack and dropped dead. <clears throat> I'm not surprised when you folks give generously because I know you love God and you want to follow the teachings of Jesus. Today we're going to look at uh, what Jesus says. Jesus has a lot to say about money and giving. We're going to look at Matthew 6, 19 to 24 and verses 2 to 4. If you want to follow along on the Bibles that are uh, under the, your chairs, it's on page 971. Uh, this is the eighth in a series of messages called Things I Wish Jesus Never Said. And we're going to find that one of the things Jesus says here is, do not store up riches on earth. You think, What? We spend 80% of our time earning money, spending money, thinking about money, managing it, taking care of our stuff, and you tell us not to do that? So let's, let's see what Jesus has to say. Why don't you stand in honor of God's Word, and why don't you read it with me? <clears throat> this is Jesus. Do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth, where moth and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasure in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. The eye is the lamp of the body. Lord Jesus, you tell us not to store up riches on earth, and that's so countercultural to our world where money is worshipped. Uh, help us to understand what you mean, um, and help us understand how to store up riches in heaven. Uh, we need to hear what you have to say. We're ready to hear. Uh, speak to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus says, for where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus says, your heart follows your treasure. <clears throat> so if Jesus is right, where is your heart? To answer that question, we need to answer another question. Where is your treasure? What do you treasure? What is important to you? I mean, what matters to you? What do you think about? Jesus says, do not store up for yourselves treasures on earth. Does Jesus mean we're never to think about money? We're never to save it? No. He inspires the Apostle Paul to write, provide for your families. And he, he inspires Solomon in the Old Testament, the first half of the Bible, to write, 
In a wise man's house, we find all kinds of oils and food stored up. You can't do that unless you save, unless you manage money. One third of the people today in the United States, Americans, have no retirement savings. God says that's not wise. Jesus means don't be preoccupied with storing up riches in this life. Don't spend all your time thinking about building up riches here. Why? Where moths and vermin destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. Moths can get into your clothes and your garments and destroy them. Rodents can get into your food. And thieves rub their hands in anticipation of taking your jewelry, your car, and your flat screen TV. I mean, it's a common sense argument. Jesus assumes everyone is storing up treasure. Children collect animals, toys, lucky stones. Teenagers collect music, technology, and clothes. Adults collect money, expensive playthings, and trophy homes. You know you've fallen into this kind of perspective of which Jesus speaks when all you think about is how can I get more? How can I protect what I've got? And how can I make sure that everyone knows how much I'm worth? That's not a good way to live, Jesus says. Why store up treasure that can be lost? I mean, homes can be destroyed by storms. Investments can be lost in an economic downturn. The world teaches that we have three choices. You can serve God, you can serve money, or you can serve both. Jesus says there are only two choices. Verse 24, no one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you'll be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. Jesus says that both God and money demand total allegiance. So anyone who divides his allegiance between the two has already cast his vote in favor of money. Since God can only be served with an exclusive devotion. Verse 20, but store for yourselves treasures in heaven, where moths and vermin do not destroy, and where thieves do not break in and steal. Jesus says, store up your treasures in heaven. Why? For where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. Jesus says, your heart follows your treasure. Maybe you're an unbeliever. You're not sure you believe in Christ. Don't even sure you believe in God. You say, I don't know if I believe in heaven or there's a God in heaven. Jesus claimed to be the Son of God. And believers believe that Jesus was raised from the dead after he was crucified on the cross. Proving him to be the Son of God. So hear him out. How does Jesus suggest we store up treasure in heaven? There are three ways you can store up treasure in heaven. One, put your priority on what will be in heaven. So what will be in heaven? Well, God will be in heaven. So anything you do to pursue God, to know Him, to serve Him, to love Him, is storing up treasure in heaven. Jesus said, read this with me. You probably already know this. You've certainly heard it. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind, and with all your strength. So we use the dollar here in the United States as our currency. Uh, many people use the peso in countries south of the border. Uh, people in Europe use the euro. Uh, in Japan, they use the yen. All currencies appropriate for the country. Jesus suggests maximize your investments in the currency of heaven. Heaven deals in the currency of love, grace, kindness, and generosity. It recognizes the currency of humility, service, and integrity. The good thing about treasures in heaven is there is no depression, no devaluation there. Our treasures on deposit in heaven are not susceptible to erosions like moths, vermin, thieves, and market crashes. So Jesus offers us the business person's best deal. 
Jesus knows the heart is always inclined towards stored up treasure. Material possessions he esteems lightly. Their value is only as it helps us come to know him, love him, and serve him. Um, Mark Twain made a trip to Europe with his wife and 11-year-old daughter, and they were hosted by all kinds of kings, a nobility. Uh, people were, you know, inviting them. Uh, everybody wanted them to, to join them for, you know, their dinner parties, and uh, universities uh, uh, gave him honorary degrees. And as they were heading home, he read the list of all the people that had hosted them. And his 11-year-old daughter looked at him and said, Daddy, wow, seems like everybody, you don't know everybody important except God. And Mark Twain is not the first person to leave out of his acquaintances God. You may be one of them. Many people give no thought to God. But God will be in heaven. Also, people will be in heaven. Heaven deals in the currency of mercy and compassion toward people. Any love we show to people is an investment in heaven. Anytime we point a family member or a friend to Jesus or share our faith with someone or lead someone to Christ, we're making an investment in heaven because that will be one more person in heaven. Whenever I find myself spending too much time thinking about money and our expenses and our stuff, I have to remind myself, none of that stuff will make it to heaven. Only people will. We always have to value people over things. There's a second way we can store up treasure in heaven. That's give. Jesus says in verse 2, so when you give to the needy, Jesus assumes that we will all give, regardless of our income level. When you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Uh, the religious performance of the scribes and Pharisees in Jesus' day had reached such absurd levels that Josephus, the historian, tells us that Pharisees would actually hire trumpeters to play ahead of them as they're on their way to the temple. And then when they had everybody's attention, then they'd pull out a bag of gold and put it in the treasury. Jesus says, don't do that. If you do that to get other people's attentions, that's all the reward you're going to get. Verse 3, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. You give so secretly, quietly, that your left hand really hardly even knows what your right hand is giving. Jesus says that when he comes again, he will praise those who give to him. Matthew 25, then the righteous will answer him, Lord, when did we see you hungry and feed you, or thirsty and give you something to drink? They gave so quietly they'd almost forgotten what they'd given. When we give to meet the needs of others, we store up treasure in heaven. When we give in, pro in response to the prompting of the Holy Spirit, we store up treasure in heaven. A couple attended a uh, Dave Ramsey uh, class in their church in Franklin, Tennessee. And uh, when they got done, they, they went to lunch. And, uh, uh, and then they met a couple that had also attended the same uh, class at the church. And they got talking. And if you've studied Dave Ramsey, you know that he, al he always says to pay off your debts first before you make any other significant purchase. And uh, you, you pay off your debts before you try to save. And so this couple was telling them how they'd paid off $60,000, but they still had another 10000 in debt to pay off, and then they wanted to adopt a, a, a little girl. Watch their story. You know how God sometimes speaks to you out of the blue and asks you to do something sort of random? Well, that's exactly how I felt one Sunday when I was asked to pick up a card with a name on it for a past or appreciation gift. God just showed up and told me he wanted to do something special for this guy, and somehow I would be involved. 
I didn't know what it was, but I knew it had to be something more than the $25 gift card I was thinking about. At that moment, I knew I was about to be pushed outside of my comfort zone. Boy, I had no idea. Two days later, I had this doctor appointment and my wife was with me. It ended early and since we are rarely without any of our five kids, I said, hey, let's have some lunch together. We are still new to the area, so after lunch we decided to shop some and then head back to the car. As we turned around, there he was, this guy with his wife, the one who God had just told me days before that he wanted to do something for. And I'm thinking, I really don't know these people, but I know that God said something special was going to happen. So we talked about stuff at church where we had just heard Dave Ramsey speak. They talked about how they had been working for nine years to get out of their debt, but that they had $10,000 more to go, and it felt like this huge rock in their life. He said, as soon as we're out of debt, we want to adopt. But we promised our kids that they could have a trampoline first, and then we would adopt. So we said our goodbyes, and I was thinking, thank you, God. I get it. I know exactly what you want me to do. We got in the car and I was so excited. I said to my husband, I know what we need to do. Let's go buy them a trampoline. Uh, well, uh, why don't we just give them $10,000? What? Are you serious? Honey, we can't just give people money like that. Money changes things and does weird stuff to people. Why can't we give them money? People have done that for me and it was okay. Besides, we have it. Listen, all I know is that when I heard them speak, I heard God say in a very clear way, take away their debt. I had to think about it for a second. Giving away $10,000 had never crossed my mind. I really wrestled wondering what God wanted us to do. Here I am with five children. It wasn't like there was a lot of extra money sitting around, and my husband worked so hard for our family. But God revealed to me that though I had plans to make home improvements and invest in this literal earth, He wanted me to make an eternal investment for His kingdom. I knew then what we had to do and began to get anxious to follow God's call. So we called him up and said, Hey, we want to come by and talk to you about something. We promise it will only take a minute. When we drove up, though, we could tell they weren't sure about what to think of us. Are we going to sell them something or what? So I just kind of blurted out, Lance, Amy, we don't really know how to say this, but we just want to give you $10,000. We told them that there are no strings attached, that God just wanted to bless them. Oh, and we also told them, don't act weird around this around church and don't tell anyone it was us. Because I stood there, I'm thinking, wow, what a tremendous thrill and total joy. Not just to be giving someone money, but to play a part and be included in the secret plans of the God of this universe. Nine months later, that couple came home with their baby from overseas, and they realized that the check had been written exactly nine months prior to their daughter's birthday. In other words, that when they gave that $10,000 check, the, 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 their baby was conceived that same day. It's like God was saying, I have a baby for you, and I'm not waiting around another nine, you know, two years for you to pay off your debt. God tapped one couple on the shoulder and told them to give, and they responded. And when they did... They stored up treasure in heaven. A third way we store up treasure in heaven is to know that giving to God is rewarded. Verse 4, Jesus says, So that your giving may be in secret, then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. This is a promise that God makes many times in the Bible, that if you give to me, if you can trust me to do that, I will reward you. A couple months ago, uh, uh, an attendee in our church stopped me and said, you know, you gave a, a series of messages uh, a few months back where you ch uh, challenged us to, to make a three-month tithe challenge. And I, I, I listened and I realized that we have debts 
that we need to pay off and, you know, we're tight. But yet I felt like God was prompting me to, to up our giving. And so I did. And the next month, our business just soared. And I tried to think about it. We hadn't done anything new with advertising or and our business model didn't change. And all I could figure was that it was God. I mean, God does that kind of thing. You know, you trust him to give. He may reward you with increased business. There might be an unexpected promotion or there might be a decrease in expenses or it might just be a deep satisfaction or joy in knowing that you are increasing God's kingdom causes. But make no mistake, God promises to reward. Parents, I know kids are expensive, but I encourage you to respond to God's call to give to Him. And let your kids know what you're doing. They should see your giving so they can, they can, you know, follow your example and learn from it. Teenagers, the time to learn to give is while you're young. Both my wife and I learned to tithe on our allowance when we were little kids and when we had our first jobs in high school and college. So when we got married, it wasn't even a discussion. We just continued that practice. I'm proud of one of our uh, teenage daughters. I see her give every month. She gets her paycheck and she gives and it's got to feel crazy to her. She knows she has all these expenses for college. But I know God will reward. Young married, I know you probably have college loans, graduate school loans. You're trying to put together enough money to buy a house and it just seems stupid. Trust God. Trust His promises. Single person? You know, maybe you got friends and they're buying all this stuff and you have to live on less because you're trying to give to God? Trust Him that He'll take care of you. Empty nester? Maybe you're at the point, you're the highest point in your income level and your lowest point in expenses. You say, if I gave back to God 10% or more, do you know how much that would be? That'd be crazy. Again, trust God. He always takes care of us when we give to Him. Listen to the Holy Spirit. Do not store up riches on earth, but store up riches in heaven. Your heart follows your treasure. Lord Jesus, thank you. You say a lot about money. You talk about that more than you talk about prayer and Bible study because you know it's, it's our life, that we spend so much of our time dealing with it and you care about all of our life. Lord Jesus, help us to trust you and change our focus from storing our riches on earth to storing up treasures in heaven. I want to give you a moment to respond to God. Tell Him you want to do that. And you'd like to give and trust that He'll take care of you, but it's hard. You pray right now. Lord Jesus, thank you that you care about us to talk about stuff that's very practical. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.